Welcome to Hubs and Drivers, a podcast for building product marketers sponsored by Build Marketing. I'm Jeff Donaldson, your host. On today's episode, Google Analytics 4, the new metrics paradigm. Thanks for being here. Google it. That phrase has been part of our daily conversations for nearly two decades. Google is by far the most popular and most used search engine on the internet. And for those same two decades, marketers have relied on Google Analytics to quantify their digital marketing efforts. That includes building product brands. But guess what? The rules of engagement are changing with the introduction of what's called Google Analytics 4. That means what is measured and what is considered to be critical intelligence is also changing. Here to break it all down is Julia Saunders, digital strategist and account director at Build Marketing. Julia, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So this is a big change because just about everybody uses Google Analytics to put numbers to what they're doing on the internet, to see how their brand is interacting. The current platform for metrics calculation and analysis of digital properties is known as universal analytics under the Google umbrella. So what, what does that mean when that goes away? What does it mean for building product brands when the current measurement system goes away? Yeah, so Google is currently in the process of sunsetting Universal Analytics, which has been the, the trusted platform for many years now. Um, and we're upgrading to basically just the next iteration of the software, and they're calling it Google Analytics 4. Um, it is set to go away um, permanently in the summer of 2023. I believe it's the end of June. Um, and what does that mean for building product brands right now? It means that you need to back up your old data that's currently stored within Universal Analytics and also just take the time to get used to the new system. So how is the new platform different than the old one? There have to be some fairly substantial changes. Can you break those down? Yeah, I think the biggest change, if we were to sum it up most succinctly, is that we're shifting to an event-based way of looking at things as opposed to just session-based. Um, so there's uh, different metrics that are changing. So instead of looking at something like average session duration or just the time that people might have spent parked on the page, we're looking at metrics that have a little bit more meaning, such as like unique user scrolls. So we're actually able to see how many people have taking the time to scroll through at least 90% of your content on the page. So it's more of a focus, not on the full session that someone has spent on your site, but rather on um, the different steps of the digital journey that they're taking along the way. So it's not just duration, it's not just I was on the site, it's what did I do when I was there? How do you believe exactly. that's impactful? Why is that so important? Because that's a big change. Yeah, I mean, I think it's impactful if we look at these two specific metrics that we're comparing. You know, someone could just be parked on your site and they stay there for a length of time and it's gonna skew your metrics. Um, people could not really be taking the time to engage with your content in a meaningful way. Um, they could, it's just not as meaningful. Um, when we're looking at things that are more event-based, we're able to see more in depth, like maybe how far people got through watching a video on your page mm -hmm. or clicking on a specific call to action. It's much more meaningful data as opposed to just kind of a high level view. That's interesting. So part of the evolution is that Google is calling on marketers of all kinds to expand their definition of conversions. And of course, conversions is important in any business when it comes to sales. Discuss that a bit. How will it look different with GA4? Yeah, I think what's great about this is that you're kind of empowered to create your own definition of conversion. I think traditionally looking at things from a marketing and a sales point of view, a point of conversion is when someone took some kind of large hand raising action. They filled out a form, they gave us their contact information, we're able to pass them from marketing over to the sales funnel. In this case, you can really set your own definition. So it could be filling out a form, it could be clicking on a particular button, it could be watching a video you know, maybe 75% of the way through. We can establish what that means for us and use it to inform, you know, what we do next in terms of marketing. Yeah, that's going to have a, a substantial impact on how you continue to grow your website or how you change things or whatnot. Yep. So some of this is related to cookie deprecation. And of course, cookie deprecation is something that we covered in a previous episode of Hubs and Drivers. It's an elimination of certain kinds of digital trackers known as cookies. We're not talking about the snacks you might find at a party or something. These are those digital cookies online. What is cookie deprecation, if we could revisit that? And how does that play into GA4? Yeah, so normally we're hearing about cookie deprecation as it relates to paid media. So, you know, cookies will be placed on 
various pages on your site and we'll use the information gathered from them about the, the user's journey to inform our marketing efforts, use them to retarget and um, serve them really personalized ads. Google has said that they're going to be eliminating the use of cookies. They keep pushing that date back just because it's going to be difficult for them to, you know, turn down that kind of income that's sure. coming in from, you know, ads that way. But um, yeah, Google Analytics 4 has made it clear that, you know, that is going to happen eventually and they're using AI to fill in the gaps that will be left when we eliminate third-party tracking cookies. So GA4 is also primed for a mobile first world. And of course, in many ways, we interface with something on the internet first on our mobile device. Explain how GA4 is sort of primed for that. Yeah, I mean, more people are browsing the web on a mobile device than ever before. And what's cool about GA4 is that it allows cross device tracking. So again, that session, we're not just looking at a session, we're looking at a, a series of events that occur in the journey. Um, so the session doesn't stop when someone moves from a mobile device over to a desktop or from a mobile device to a tablet or something of that nature. Um, so it allows us a more holistic view of how people are using the website across devices. So let's drill down a little bit. What do building product marketers need to do to be prepared for this? Because there's a little while before this change occurs. There's some time to sort of get ramped up, right? Exactly. So I would say the first thing is just getting used to the GA4 interface, backing up any of your data that you might want to look at retroactively that's currently stored in Universal Analytics. I think it's a time to really increase your focus on user interface and user experience on your site, thinking about you know how can I create a series of compelling events that are going to lead people through this digital journey to get them to the end goal of whatever we define conversion to be. Um, and then I think engaging content is also a, a really important component just because we are able to measure, you know, did people look at the majority of the content on the page? How did they engage with it? Um, and so creating that kind of engaging content and having it live on your site is what is going to ensure people stay there. Big changes with GA4. Julia Saunders, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So here are some stunning statistics on how much all of us rely on Google searches. There are over 70,000 Google searches each second. That's almost 227 million an hour and about 5.4 billion Google searches per day. A lot of searching. So would you like us to cover a specific topic on an upcoming edition of Hubs and Drivers? Email us your suggestions at info at hubsanddriverspodcast.com. That's info at hubsanddriverspodcast.com. And make sure to follow us and like us on YouTube or on wherever you listen to your podcast. That's all for this edition of Hubs and Drivers. I'm Jeff Donaldson. See you next time.